Arise, U.S. correspondent Eric Ham joins us now live from Washington. Eric, thank you very much for joining us. Now, uh, the Nevada race has been called. What's the key takeaway, you know, from the caucus? Well, this was the first state where we saw a, a large number of voters of color that actually uh, made their voices heard. And what we saw from this was Bernie Sanders was able to coalesce many of these voters around him. Many thought that Joe Biden would be able to bring the African-American and Latino support. We did see that Joe Biden did, in fact, win amongst African-Americans. However, for the first time, that sleeping giant Latino voters not only came out in big numbers, but they came out and drove to support one candidate, and that was Bernie Sanders. In addition to that, what we saw was Bernie Sanders won among uh, young voters, uh, middle-aged voters, and some older voters. So it looks like right now there's a lot of momentum behind the Bernie Sanders camp and this campaign. And now we're seeing that actually in the polling uh, data, not only nationally, but in those key Super Tuesday states uh, leading into Super Tuesday, which, which is just two weeks away. And now, Eric, there's no rest for the wary as Democrats, you know, will debate uh, uh, in South Carolina uh, tomorrow. And the primary is this Saturday, isn't it? It is. That's right. In fact, uh, we're seeing that uh, the debate will take place tomorrow. Michael Bloomberg will be on that stage again. And remember, uh, he will not be on the ballot in South Carolina, but yet he will be on that stage. We saw how he was viciously attacked uh, on that stage by his competitors uh, in Nevada. But also, uh, we will be watching to see how these other candidates go after the front runner now, Bernie Sanders. In fact, after the Nevada caucuses, we have we are now hearing from the Pete Buttigieg campaign complaining about irregu irregularities in the voting. And so they are actually lo uh, looking for a recount for Nevada and they are, are willing. They're, they're not conceding that they actually came in third place. The race has been called where Bernie Sanders came in first. Joe Biden came in second. And now we're seeing uh, the gloves really come off as many of the candidates really begin to go after the front runner, Bernie Sanders. Now, Eric, there's a big name politician who is giving Joe Biden a potential shot in the arm. Tell us more about that. Yeah, and uh, we're learning that Jim Clyburn, uh, the most influential politician in South Carolina, also a member of leadership in the uh, House Congress, is now actually going to endorse Wednesday morning. He has now come out and said who he will endorse, but our reporting is telling us that he is going to get behind the candidacy of Joe Biden. If that's true, that could solidify his support among the African-American community in South Carolina and actually be just enough to get him to the finish line and defeat Bernie Sanders and win his first primary state in South Carolina, giving him that much needed momentum heading into the Super Tuesday states. And as you speak about Bernie Sanders, he's growing in terms of strength, isn't he, as the Democratic uh, front runner. Uh, but President Trump has reached all time highs, you know, in terms of his approval ratings, hasn't he? He is. And what we're seeing here is this is almost like a, a, a two athletes circling one another and they are peaking at just the right times. We're seeing Bernie Sanders actually not only coalesce uh, that key progressive voting block and, and young voters, but also what we're seeing is he's winning with a large swath of voters of color, young people and, and middle aged voters as well. He's also doing very well demographically, winning uh, in uh, eastern states, southern states and on the West Coast. But as he's beginning to coalesce uh, the, the Democratic voters around him, what we're seeing with President Donald Trump is not only is he now experiencing all time highs and approval rating, but also uh, in a key poll where a majority of Americans are now saying that they are they their confidence is at an all time high with the direction that the country is heading in. In addition to that, we're seeing that uh, President Donald Trump is also uh, doing very well in, in many of these key battleground states. Now, even with that, we're still showing in head to head matchups with um, a number of the key top Democratic uh, candidates. Donald Trump is still trailing. So while his numbers are rising, 
they are still not enough to get him over, at least in these hypothetical matchups, not only with the front runner Bernie Sanders, but with other candidates such as Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren. And now, um, Eric, we, you know, with Trump reaching all of the uh, all-time highs in terms of approval ratings, do the Democrats uh, sort of stand a chance in, you know, this year's elections, or is it a bit too early to say? It's way too early to say because, again, uh, when you're looking at these races, these are basically snapshots in time. So we look at what's happening right now, where the trends are going. Now, what we have been seeing for quite some time is Donald Trump has been underwater in these head-to-head -head matchups with a number of these top candidates. However, uh, what we are seeing is his numbers are beginning to rise. But again, President Donald Trump has done very little to expand his base. And that could be the, the difference in terms of winning and losing in November. All right, then, Eric Ham, thank you very much for your insights. It will be good to sort of see how things play out. We'll definitely keep watch. Thank you. Well, you're still watching Arise America. Time now for a quick break. When we return, we'll bring you more. Do stay with us.